Although it's been 20 years since NASA climate scientists first announced they had picked up the signal of global warming, some deniers still insist it's not happening. In many cases, it's because of long, out-of-date notions of what the science is really saying. One of the most popular that I heard from a high school student recently is illustrated in this clip from a bogus climate denial film that gets a lot of circulation on the internet. It goes like this. Forests have been felled to make way for residential areas and shopping malls. Fields replaced by office blocks in stone and concrete. And the space between the buildings has been paved over to become motorways and parking lots. The switch from countryside to city has changed the local climate. Modern man sweats from the urban heat island effect. Now, it is true that the climate of those cities has warmed, but not because of greenhouse gases increasing, but because of the change in the uh, surroundings and the uh, building of structures. Is that true? Could the scientists at NASA, the National Academy of Science, the American Meteorological Society, and every professional scientific organization on the planet really have been so silly as to miss something this obvious? Of course not. They've compensated for that factor. But let's look at it a different way. Many of you have seen this picture. It's a satellite image of the Earth at night with all the lights of the city showing up. We're going to use this to show something. But first, I have to do a little transformation. Let's make the light dots into dark spots. Are you with me? Same map, just inverted it to make something easier to see. All those dots represent city lights. This map would be a pretty good indicator of where we'd expect the urban heat island effect to show up, don't you think? Now let's look at another map. This is the Global Temperatures Anomaly map from NASA for 2008. It shows which parts of the globe are warming the fastest. The darker the red, the more that area has been warming in the past several decades. Do you see where I'm going with this? Of course you do. Let's put the temperature map over the map of city lights. Notice anything? The urban areas don't really correspond with the red warming zones. Doesn't that seem strange if these urban areas are supposed to be the places where thermometers are distorted? Why do denialists persist in repeating something that is so easily proven wrong? In some cases, ignorance. In some cases, laziness. In some cases, they simply don't care if they're right or wrong, as long as they create confusion and paralysis. Remember, for the fossil fuels companies, every delay in action is money in the bank. But some denialists persist in the notion that evil scientists all over the world are deliberately distorting the temperature data to fool you about global climate. It's all part of a sinister plot. I have an idea. Instead of arguing about whose temperature data is right, let's just throw it all out. That's right, throw out all the temperature data. Let's look at the world with fresh eyes, as if we're aborigines with technological tools. No thermometers to tell us what's going on, just the real responses of the real planet. Turns out that someone's done this. In a paper by NASA scientists published in the journal Nature, Observations were made of the timing of nature's most basic processes. The migration of birds. The blooming of flowers. The spawning of fish. The peak flows of glacial streams in springtime. Flowers, streams, and birds don't have an agenda. They don't know about politics. They just respond. And they tell us about what their environment is doing because this study of 29,500 sets of physical and biological data found that at a global scale, 90% of the observed changes were in the direction of warming. Here's another example. These are pictures from space of lakes on the frozen tundra of Siberia. The first one was taken in 1973. Notice the large round lake in the upper right. Now see what's changed in a photo taken in 2002. The ground has become warmer, softer, and the lake water is seeping down into the spongy ground. 
that formerly was frozen permafrost. It's changing the face of Siberia and delivering even more heat to deeper levels where huge stores of carbon and methane have been frozen for many millennia. Lakes don't lie. Birds, fish, and flowers aren't liberal or conservative. They merely respond. And the story that they're telling us is the same one that every leading scientific organization on the planet has now been telling us for decades. Climate change is real. We're doing it. The consequences are dire. And we need to stop. I want to thank everybody again for all your comments and questions. Keep them coming. There's lots more crocs in the queue. Uh, and keep coming back to Climate Denial Crock of the Week. See you next week.